Welcome to Naresh Technologies. I am Bangar Raju and this is the continuation series of our ASP.NET videos. Uh, in the last video, I was just demonstrating about the difference between post back and cross page post back. So, what is post back? Post back means a page calling back itself is what we call as a post back and cross page post back means a page calling another page is what we call as a cross page post back. And in this process, all the data gets submitted to the page. In post back, the data will be submitted back to the same page and the cross page post back, the data gets submitted to another page. In the previous example, we have just designed a login form uh, with a name called as login form cross page post back and this is the login form we designed. And whenever I click on the login button, I want the data to be submitted to validate.aspx. So, this is another page where the data has to be submitted. And to do this, and to do this, for the button control, we set with the property. What is the property? Post back URL. By using the post back URL, I specified the target location where the data has to be submitted. Means, the current form, what is the current form? Login form cross page post back has to submit the data to valid.aspx. So, to specify that in the post back URL, we are specifying the value. And in the runtime, when we click on this button, actually there is no logic behind this uh, button at all. If you just watch out the events of this control, if you watch the events of the control, you very clearly see the click event is not having any associated event handler. That does not have any associated event handler. You go to the source and we have implemented the logic for page load event as well as reset click event. But we did not write any logic for the login button. But whenever I click on the login button, whenever I click on the login button, what happens behind the screen is it will simply submit the page to validate.aspx because we are telling the post back URL value should be validate.aspx. If I do not specify, the default post back is same page. We can again verify this, remove this and run your web form. When you run the web form, I am entering admin, admin and click on the login button. But still, the page is not going to change. It is just staying on the same page. Why is it staying on the same page? Because you see when you click on this button for any number of times, but again the data is submitted to the same page because by default it is a post back. But I want the data to be coming to another page. If I want the data to be going to another page, that is the reason for specifying the value here that is the post back URL. With the post back URL, we will specify where the navigation has to be done. The navigation has to be done to validate.aspx. Select it. Again, if we run this, when we click on the login button, it will submit all the data to validate.aspx. Let us have a look. Again, I launched our login form and here I am giving admin, admin, a valid username password. Click on login. When we click on login, the control went to validate.aspx and from there we got the output called as valid user. And what is the logic we implemented in validate.aspx? That is a very simple logic what we have. What is that? We are capturing the values. How to capture the values? Request dot form of. What is the request dot form of? Actually, all the values that are present on the form. What is that form? You have a look. If you go to the login page source view, you can notice all these controls, whatever we have placed, are present under this form, are present under this particular form. And this form is the base for designing any GUI application. We just require this particular form. We use the form in our Windows programming also, but there we call it as a Windows form. And here also we have this particular form and all the controls will be inside the form. 
and all these control values, all these control values will be submitted to the server, will be submitted to the server in the form of a form collection, in the form of a form collection and we can access the form collection values by just using the name of the appropriate control. This is a form collection and this particular form collection value by giving the name, txt name can be accessed. The return type of this is a string. So, when I say request dot form of txt name, the value of the control will come to here and when I say request dot form of txt password, the value of the password will come to here and here I am just adding a simple logic. Name is admin, password is admin, response dot write valid user, otherwise invalid user. This is a simple code what we have written. So, this is what we have learned in the previous video, how to perform a cross page pushback. Fine. Now, listen, without using, without using post back URL also, without using post back URL also, we can submit a page uh, to another page. We can submit a page to another page. How is it possible? Have a look. Let me remove this. I am not using the post back URL. Now, go to the source view and in the source view, just now, we have just been checked out the form tag. Go there. And this form tag has an attribute. What is the attribute? Action is equals to. And action is equals to, you can specify the name of the page to which the data has to be submitted, validate.aspx. Actually, in the classical ASP, in the classical ASP, this is how we used to submit the data from one page to another page by using an action attribute of the form tag form tags action attribute. Here we can specify validate.aspx. Now run this. I am entering some username and some password, some password value. Click on the login and when you click on the login, you can see there validate.aspx invalid user. So, the page has a submitted to validate.aspx right now and I got it as invalid user. So, this is another way how the data submission can be done from one page to another page, from one page to another page. So, two options are there. One, by using the buttons, post back URL, you can specify the page where it has to be navigated. Option number two is, we can also do this, we can also do this by the form tags action attribute. By the form tags action attribute, we can specify that action is equals to the page name where the data has to be submitted. So, whenever I click on this, it goes there. But the difference what we have between that and this is, see, what are the drawback in this case is, if at all I am just going to give some username, some password and click on the reset button, reset button. My intention is to reset the form. When I click on the reset button, then also it will go to validate.aspx. But actually reset has to reset the things, but did not resetting the things. What is it doing? The button is also taking me to validate.aspx. So, the problem what you have in this case is, tomorrow I may have three or four buttons on my screen. So, when I said action is equals to a page name, for which button that action has to be performed? It does not know. Because for which button the action has to be performed, for all the buttons it will perform this action. I have four buttons, all the four will submit of the data to the server target page. But the, the advantage of using post back URL is, we can specify to the particular control for a button we are telling, for a button we are going to specify here. What is that? Here we have a button. And for that particular button, which button? Login button. For that particular button, we are telling I want it to be going in that location, post back URL. So, when I set it for the button, when I click on the login button only, it will go to validate. But if I set action, not only login button, reset button also will take me to the page. Not only login button, reset button also will take me to the page. So, that is the reason why we should not use this action attribute. The better option for us is using the post back URL. But this is also possible, just giving an idea, this is also possible, but I do not want this. Let me remove it. Let me come back and we will use the same old process what we have. What is that? Post back URL. You just set the value here. Which one? Validate.aspx. Immediately, it writes the code here, post back URL is equals to validate. Now, reset button will reset and the login button will submit. You can watch the output. 
admin admin click on the login button when i click on the login button see there valid user and reset will only just reset the form it is not submitting the page who will submit the page only login button see directly i'm clicking on login then also it submits validate user invalid user okay so reset will only purely concentrate on resetting and login is going to concentrate on submitting so like this we are just going to have two options how you can submit the data from one page to another page so like this we have a chance to post back the data for different pages either by using the post back url property or second option what we just have is the forms action tag also action attribute also we can just do the post back url advantage is that button only will submit but action means all the buttons on the screen will carry the data to the target page so that is the difference what we have between the action attribute and the post back url thank you for watching the video for more videos please subscribe to our youtube channel Nourish IT.